to La Movie thought it's impossible to not spend a lot of money and to do things on a budget. But we decided, you know what, we want to keep coming back, but we can't afford to stay in all these crazy fancy places and eat out at Pony every night as much as we'd like to. So we decided we're going to make a video on how to come to Shella on a budget. So today we're going to show you all the things you can do to save some money when you come here and to actually make a trip to Shella pretty affordable. Actually, very affordable. for coming to Shella on a budget is choosing your accommodation wisely. First of all, that has to do with location. So I highly suggest you stay in Shella as opposed to Lamu Town or Manda, even though there may be cheaper options there because you're gonna be spending most of your time in Shella and then you'll be taking boats back and forth, which is just gonna bring up your costs anyways. So you might as well stay where you want to be. One of the most expensive things about coming to Shella we've found is the accommodation because it's usually huge mansions and these beautiful homes but you know that's not really affordable. So what we've done is we have found a couple really cheap accommodations and when I say cheap we're basing this price off of the price of a private room in a hostel around the world which averages out at about 30 to 40 dollars Canadian which is around 3,000 to 4,000 Kenyan shillings. And we have found two Airbnbs that are really, really great. There is this one, which we're going to call the Treehouse because it doesn't actually have an official name. And it's epic. It has everything you could want that a fancy house would provide. You have your own private entrance just near Amman, so it's really, really central. You're near to anywhere you'd want to go. You have a full kitchen all to yourselves. It's a great dining table. It has a stove. It has a sink, a toaster, a kettle, everything you can need. We have a giant bedroom just to my right here that has actually two beds, so you can come as more people than just a couple with an ensuite bathroom that is just perfect. And then the best part about it is that just next to it there's a huge balcony that overlooks the water and it's all to yourself. You can pretty much do everything you want to do there. And if you're a digital nomad like us, the thing we love about this place is the amount of workspaces there are. So one of you could be working here, there's a desk in the bedroom, and like I said, there's a table on the balcony. And for the price, the fact that you're high up, you get a view, you have a balcony and a kitchen, and there's a bonus rooftop. So there's nothing actually up there but somewhere you can sit. But still, this is a really tall building and you have a really, really good view for sunset, for sunrise. What we always do is we check Airbnb to find our accommodations and that's usually where we get the cheapest rates. For example, this room, which is in the Green Tree, it's a new place, so don't be afraid if there's no reviews on Airbnb yet because it's really good, we can confirm. And uh, also the host's name is Rama and he actually manages a lot of the places in Shella, so you can really trust any place that's managed by him. And it's really great, we have this huge bedroom, which is only 40, 46 Canadian dollars a night. The bed is extremely comfortable, we can confirm. It has a mosquito net, which is handy because there are a lot of mosquitoes here. We have a full ensuite bathroom with a really great shower and everything works perfectly. And I think the best part is that we have a balcony to ourselves. So this is the door to enter the room and just behind the bed there is a door to the balcony. And it is attached to the kitchen, which you have full access to. So technically everybody in the green tree, there's three rooms, can use the kitchen, but nobody's ever really there. So that balcony is pretty much a private balcony. And yeah, it's it's really perfect. It even, even has a fan, so it can stay nice and cool in here. Two huge windows. It's awesome. For $46, this is a steal because if you don't look hard, you'll really only find places that go upwards of $80 a night and then it's not really on a budget. And what you can also do is once you've stayed at one of these places and come in person, you can talk to the owners directly and you'll definitely get a discount. That goes for most of the Airbnbs as well as the, as well as the hotels in the area like Masfani and Stopover.
So the second way that you can easily save money when you come to Shella is a classic one, which is eating at home. Because generally the prices of food at restaurants are very high here. I mean, at least to us, we find it quite expensive. Most of the meals range between 1,300 to 1,000, no, to 2,000 even. And yeah, that's quite pricey, but if you do come here, shop local and cook at home. So try and prioritize getting a place with a kitchen like the ones that we've showed you, and they're very affordable. And then there's lots of grocery stores in the area. You just have to go for a little walk in the town, and I'm sure you'll come across like 10 of them. And also, everybody in Shella is so kind that if you ask anybody, they'll point you in the right direction. And yeah, you will save a ton of money by grocery shopping and not eating out. But that being said, you are on vacation, you have come to Shella where the food is amazing, like the vegetable curry at Bahari, the shawarma that you can get with tofu at Kajani, and pretty much all the food at Paponi. So we're not saying never eat out, just try and make one or two of your meals, like breakfast and lunch at home and save going out for dinner because there's a nice vibe and then you can spend a little bit more there. So we've decided to eat in for lunch and we'll tell you exactly how much it costs. So for a yogurt like this and a mango, this was a total of 300 shillings. Five bananas was 100. Four dimu, two passion fruit, and one chunk of ginger was I don't remember. <laughs> Maybe 200. Yeah, I was. I think it was like roughly 200 or 300. And for lunch, we're just gonna have super light lunch with some fruits and some yogurt and peanut butter. And then tomorrow, we're actually going to pick up granola. You can buy it from Dua House, which is one of the houses in the area, and it is. One of our favorite and go-to meals here when we're trying to eat on a budget and buying our own groceries is this like chickpea avo toast. So we get fresh bread from Jua House, there's a bakery there, or you can just get sliced bread from any shop. It might be actually a bit cheaper, but this is really delicious. Then we get fresh avocado, we get a can of chickpeas, tomato, garlic, dimu, which is lemon, lime, then olive oil, salt, pepper, and chili. Just mush it all together, put it on toast. It's cheap, delicious and really perfect for such a hot day. So I hope that all of those tips were super helpful and that you can come to Shella and not worry about having to break the bank. And yeah, we're gonna end it kind of going against everything that we've said and not saving money and actually going out to Kajani, one of the nice restaurants, because the power is out, we can't really use our kitchen, and sometimes you have to understand that there's just, there's some times where you can spend a little bit more and there's other times that you can save. So don't forget to subscribe and go check out our Instagrams to follow more of a day-to-day -day whatever we do while we're adventuring and we'll see you next time.